I'm going to be honest with you. The okay. money, that's what we are all looking for. Why is it that nurses in the U.S. are paid so much? The <laughs> calling is not going to pay the bills. <laughs> what are some of the difficult challenges you've had to deal with as a nurse in the U.S. with patients? Bro, working as a nurse is not an easy job. As a black guy, yeah. racism, he cannot re disrespect you because he even knows that <laughs> you're even making money more than him. Okay. <laughs> when COVID hit and traveling became a big deal, you're going to end up, you know, being broke. Hello, viewers, and welcome to the channel welcome to another exciting episode it's a different type of video today and today we have the privilege of interviewing someone who has been a nurse here in the u.s for quite a period of time now obviously he's been here longer than me and he's been a nurse here for far long and he's been a nurse here for a number of years now today he's going to answer a lot of the questions you guys keep sending into my inbox that i have no answer to some of them i need to go and do research but now we have the a nurse here and we are going to hear from the horse's own own mouth and thank you for subscribing to the channel and watching our videos I'll, I'll encourage you to keep watching our videos subscribe to the channel and leave in the comments that you want us to ask in our next interviews below and so without saying any further words can you please introduce yourself to us thank you for having me on this wonderful platform i'm very honored to be here and thank you viewers for also supporting our man here keep supporting keep subscribing my name is elvis yeah you, uh, i want to keep it short just want to hide my last name okay some reason but i'm elvis so the first time i met you i met you on a ward in the hospital so i mean obviously you are a nurse i got to know that you are a travel nurse but can you tell us how did you get into nursing in the first place um that's a very good question because um sometimes most people when they are asked this question what got you into nursing they will yeah. tell you oh um is the passion okay how to take care of people since i was a child i wanted that. to be a nurse yeah so i want to help people <laughs> I want to be compassionate and stuff like that. I mean, I'm very compassionate and this and that. Yeah. So, but I think mine comes from, a, I mean, this angle where when I was a kid, I had a friend who died, who passed away. You okay. Know, when we were, we were very young. And we went out to uh, play, you know, in Africa. Okay. Play, I mean, climb trees, you know, do whatever. I mean, monkey kind of play. But <laughs> might be like, oh, he's racist. I mean, that's, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, we've all done it before. But okay. yeah, he climbed. We, I mean, he was, we were playing, and he climbed tree, fell from the tree. I mean, hit the ground, and he was taken to the hospital. And uh, looking and seeing how the doctors and the nurses responded, you know, do did everything they could. Yeah. But unfortunately, my friend, I mean, he passed at a young age, and uh, that also made me find, you know, my, you know, step like uh, it helped me also to find my purpose also in that field. So I would say it wasn't because he died that got me into that, but growing up and uh, trying to figure out what I wanted to do, I realized that job was for me you know it was a part of me and i figured because before i wanted to be a doctor you know we're thinking about that and life got us into nursing so mm. yeah so you got into nursing based on your experience of what it wasn't really had. necessary based on the experience but you know going growing up when you get to a certain age we get asked you know many times this these questions like what do you want to be in, uh, okay. in the future in school our teachers ask us yeah. and uh, i mean i had a friend who said he wanted to be a watchman you know so, <laughs> yeah he wanted to be I, a watchman I, I wanted to be a pilot is that, so now are you a pilot <laughs> and the other funny thing is that according to my life plan uh -huh. this is the year i must buy an airplane so <laughs> and, uh, it's still mission in progress okay yep. the funny thing is it's like you know <laughs> when you when you dream of coming to america you're like oh when i come i'll buy a house i'll buy cars so <laughs> but here we are you know we're still here <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay yeah so that 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 was the whole thing but it wasn't necessarily that that but uh growing up something that is you know you have to be able to recognize your potentials you okay. know and know what you're capable and what you can and the compassion thing and uh, caring for people thing also kicked in okay you know what i mean so that encouraged my you know decision to want to embark on that path uh, to become uh, a nurse okay so it's a it's a combination of everything my experience I and think. the compassion and the decision i made also uh, so, i took as a kid you know a lot of people who go on to become nurses when you speak to them you get some fraction of them who actually wanted to become nurses from the beginning mm -hmm. but you get to see a lot of people as well who had 
ambitions of becoming medical officers and somehow they failed to make the entry requirements or they failed to make the mark and so they had to settle for the next available option which happened to be nursing and you mentioned that you also wanted to be a doctor and then now you are a nurse but but now you're yeah, working in the I u.s mean, and you have the chance to be a doctor do you think that you want to go back and become become a doctor i mean let me clarify that back back story when i first moved to the u.s it was just me myself and my god only okay and uh i came in here in ghana when before i even traveled i was gonna embark on that journey okay. when i came here i started working and stuff like that i wanted to go back to school and it was just me and myself only and my god so i didn't have no family nobody you know to support financially i had to do everything by myself okay. i didn't have no uncle or no sister or nobody over here mm. i had to do everything I, and i came here at a younger age you okay. know, not at a, my early you know i came here in my early 20s you know what i mean okay yeah so it was just me myself starting life didn't have nobody to support me do anything so i had to do everything by myself okay. so i had I needed to take it step by step you know what i mean yeah so i was like okay medical school or being a doctor these things you know comes with cost it's okay. very expensive over here even with nursing degree yeah by the time you're done with the program you should be owing like over ninety thousand two hundred thousand yeah. dollars you know in loans yeah. and stuff like that so becoming a nurse will also put you there and you have to sacrifice your time you have to you in the time you will not get time to work you not get time to you know do other things to make something for yourself so uh i was like okay then let me do this because even before i even wanted to join the mili military okay you know what i mean yeah. yeah i wanted to join the military before but all because uh any, anybody that travels to the us uh, will testify with me or even the uk or whatever it is we, we want to find a shortcut you know to become financially you know stable and yeah. free and stuff like that so that kind of influence you know my decision to to think otherwise you know to rethink about my decision i was like let me take it step by mm. step and get into nursing yeah and after that if uh i feel like i still have that financial muscles to continue then i won't but after getting into nursing and you know doing this by myself i was like uh, after covid also hit and traveling also kicked in i was yeah. like oh i think uh, i'm good with uh just being my i mean just with my RN, you know, BSN degree. Great, great, great. So how long have you been a nurse and what specialty do you normally work in? I've been a nurse for, I mean, technically, if you ask me, I've been a nurse for so long, uh, health assistant. I mean, that's how Ghanaians call it. And yeah. uh, or over here, certified nursing assistant. I was that before going to school. Okay. Did that for like some years, about totally like in all. I've done, I've, I've, I've been into nursing for like 10 years, but as a professional, you know, RN, BSN, um it's been like about four to five years now professionally no, four to five years and in which specialty have you been working in um icu intensive ICU, care okay. unit uh okay. yeah nice so 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 how was working in the icu like before you moved to being a travel nurse i know now you work you work on med search floors which is like one of the floors i met you but how is working in the icu like because the icu is seen like one of these premium specialties in nursing people say med search or medical surgical is the ghetto mm -hmm. and i see it's like the, <laughs> the, the 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 premium That's areas a good one, eh? yeah so so how is it like working in the icu so right on i mean from school uh, it was it, it was always my decision my plan to work in critical care unit mm -hmm. first of all i'm just gonna be honest <laughs> it's the acuity you know what okay. i mean uh next to patient ratio yeah. and stuff like that uh, i was like man i'm not gonna stress myself work myself i've worked my ass up and I uh, have like about five or six patients, you know, taking care of and stuff like that. Yeah, so right from, uh, right from, I mean, answered from school, um, it was my plan to work in a critical care unit. And moving forward, uh, it was the acuity, you know, uh, the nurse to patient ratio was uh, one of the things that um, really also influenced my idea to also work in the ICU because I didn't want to have like five or six patients. I just wanted to have that whole time and be autonomous, you know, take charge, you know, be in control and be able to do more things and also know and learn more things on the yeah. job and stuff like that. So I needed that time and I needed to learn more because I before I had the idea of becoming a doctor. Yeah. So I wanted to get to, I mean, the side where I would learn more skills, you know, okay. get exposed to so many things to guide me uh, on that path. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and give you the experience of the exactly. hierarchy. Exactly. Is that why ICU nurses are so like 
proud and full of themselves <laughs> <laughs> because I I don't understand. Honestly, you know, and 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 just before you come in, when you speak to a lot of recruiters, and I know the viewers will also agree that when you speak to a lot of recruiters, especially here in the US and back in the UK, they emphasize a lot of skills that you need to get in the ICU, like insertion of ET tubes, like peppering drips using multiple pumps, monitors, and all of that. <laughs> and those skills are, are peculiar to uh, IC nurses. But even even though we all wrote the same NCLEX, like someone said on, on one of the Reddit forums, subreddits, why is that we all write the same NCLEX, but IC nurses are giving that 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 kind of premium? Like, we, we, what, what, what is the difference? Because you are working in ICU. The difference, okay, medicine. so right from the answer of school, before, over here in America, before, when, when you get to your final year, you know, getting to graduate, yeah. we have this thing that we do, we call the capstone that okay. we do, where that's like you, you, you have a group where you, you do your final project and also on the other side too, um, that is where you get to pick your specialty, okay. you know, where you want to work yeah. after school. Mm -hmm. So you pick that and the, has, I mean, the school will look for a hospital for you, okay. you know, a place or where you want to go work. So with me, I picked ICU. Okay. Even before I graduate, even before I wrote my NCLEX. Mm. So and with this, they make sure you work like certain amount of hours. Okay. About two hundred and something or whatever, one twenty or whatever hours, you know, to get that. That's about nine weeks. Okay. You know, working in that specialty, in that field, to yeah. gain the experience, okay. to prepare you to uh, towards you know where you're going to be working after school after okay. you pass your NCLEX. Okay. So with me, I chose ICU, and I really I even got hired on the job. Okay. I even got hired before I even graduated. Okay. Before okay. I even wrote my NCLEX. Great. Yeah. So that kind of prepare you towards that, and being an being an ICU nurse, as he said, it counts with a lot because trust me, bro. There's a lot of things that I learned on the ICU floor that I saw on the ICU floor that I even. I felt like I didn't even see or heard of these things when I was in school. Okay. Because ICU is like, a, it's a whole different world, like a new, dif a whole different environment where you get exposed. You, I mean, you, especially I was working on a cardiac med search ICU. Okay. So we had a little bit of everything. Yeah. Uh, all kinds of patients, yeah. very critically ill patients. Yeah. So um, you get exposed to almost everything. Okay. Working on that floor is, I mean, for the first few months, is very, very overwhelming. You know, yeah. like you, you get burned out, you get stressed, the anxiety, you know, okay. that kicks in because you want to do everything right. You have like about one patient with like about 10, 15 pumps at the, yeah. going at the same time. Yeah. Plus uh, the patient being intubated on okay. a ventilator okay. and stuff like managing all these things. So you are doing a whole lot of things at a time. Okay. And it's not just one patient, technically about two or three patients that you're, you know, you're doing the same thing. So it's like, it makes you, when you go to work, I mean, it makes you do even more than expected. It, you puts, know what I it mean? puts a lot of strain on your mental and yeah. ability. And you're always eager to learn, you research whilst on the job. Being an, I mean, on a med search floor, I mean, you just go, you give your meds. What do you mean? You <laughs> give ice water. <laughs> <laughs> tell this, tell this ice cream next to be careful. You deal with like uh, patients that are very cookie, uh, cuckoo, like they just want to leave in the hospital yeah. and go who are ready, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So you are always kind of, you know, pissed off. You're always stressed or uh, overset because you, some patients who came to the hospital and are ready to leave there, I mean, stressing you up. Okay. So it's not even giving you the time to even do some research, even to read more about your patient. Yeah. If you've noticed that. Yeah. If you are on a med search floor, mm -hmm. it's very hard to sometimes even like go through or read a whole lot about your patient or know yeah. more about your patient because you have like, like about six patients who are pacing you and stressing you and pulling you here and there. You know yeah. what I mean? But on an ICU floor, you have like two or three patients at least three or two you know so you have time to do what to, to learn and read and, about them and you have to be able to give every detail you have to be able to know the history okay of the person you have to be able to know i mean the dots you have to be able to connect the dots okay so because if something happens and the doctor you, you call the doctor or you call you doing or the doctor comes in you should be able to know what is going on with the patient you know what i mean okay yeah so if I mean, I'm hoping that you enjoy working in the ICU and all of that, but the question is, why did you abandon it and move into travel nursing? And how long have you been a travel nurse? Because I met you on a message floor, so you, are, you obviously are Well, thank God to call me. 
don't get me wrong but when when we when we finish school i think i would say nurses started getting recognized when COVID hit okay because before although not that we were underpaid but the pay wasn't all that good you know what i mean oh, so it wasn't mean all, all in terms of pay pay wise okay. and the load work, workload it wasn't okay. matching okay you know what i mean yeah i mean you you would do a lot as a staff as a staff nurse mm-hmm. but the amount of money that you're paying you receiving or you're getting paid you know doesn't really tally okay. you know what i mean okay. so when travel and also with me too even when i was in school i already had made a decision to travel you know okay. it was something that was already in me because i was i kept telling myself that uh, man i'm gonna be traveling and I, i'm gonna be a travel nurse because i want to see places and also I want to get to experience more and uh i also want to um go to places that people don't want to go also especially in alaska that was one of my main target places that i wanted to go so it was something that i, I already wanted to do and when COVID hit and traveling became a big deal okay. i was like this is the opportunity let me just jump into it let me do so 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 what was the main reason you you mentioned that you had wanted to be a travel nurse while in school and all of that why why did you always have the interest in being in being a travel nurse well first of all i would say <laughs> <laughs> oh, Did oh, I say oh, that? <laughs> oh my god <laughs> the money you know the money first of all, i'm gonna be honest with you the okay. money that's what we are all looking for okay when i'm on the job working with my patient it's about it's all about my patient when i'm at work it's all about my patient you know what i mean okay but when after work what's gonna pay the bills okay. money you also yeah. want to you don't want to be doing nursing for the rest of your life too well well that's what means me it's not the money it's the calling it's the calling like most people are saying it's the calling <laughs> the calling is not gonna pay the bills so <laughs> Oh, yeah, I'm just joking. Yep. Because, <laughs> but, but, I mean, looking at, I, I just wanted to know my worth also. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah, I mean, sometimes too, it's all about, you know, know because there's so much opportunity in this country. There's so many angles that you can, you know. Yeah. Yeah, avenues that can create, you know. So if you have the courage, you have that confidence to be able to do that, why not? Yeah, so I would say financially i mean money wise the money encouraged me also yeah. and also getting to see places and also getting to have more experience i mean whilst on the job also yeah. and, um, i i, I do agree with you that. when you talk about the money because i mean anybody who's working would want to be paid the commensurate amount right and then you also spoke about the fact that it helps you get experience but when you say experience and the, and the exposure what mm-hmm. what exactly do you mean is it like experience the different conditions or different hospitals? What what is that? that okay, so so you know you know that uh, in in the US here they have there's a standard policy for like our hospitals, okay. like a general you know policy for yeah. our hospitals, like the HIPAA you know rules and other stuff. Okay, those are I mean very general to every very from I mean every hospital go with that. But it de- when you when you work with different hospitals that's where you get to know there are different policies you know okay. for every hospital okay. every hospital every facility has its own policies okay that's, for example um maybe if you have to insert a fully catheter you know yeah. fully insertion the way this facility will want you to do it is different from the way this facility will want you to, i mean to do it okay some facility will require you to have like two nurses yeah being present to be, I mean, in order to insert a Foley. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, but other hospitals, it's fine. They you just, you know, that. you just do it. Another example will be, uh, I was in California in this hospital and before you give, you start a heparin drip or yeah. even do a heparin rate change or um, go up or go down, or whatever it is you have to do with a heparin, you have to have about three nurses. Oh. And then not just three nurses, you have to have like uh, either a charge nurse or okay. a nursing resource mm. present or a supervisor present and another, another nurse. And not just that. Okay. You have to uh, put the creatinine, you know, level in the computer okay. to calculate and get a creatinine uh, uh, clearance value and after that you write that on a piece of paper because you should be able to know with the creatinine uh, clearance then uh there's a there's a number if it goes below you're not supposed to you know okay you have to stop the help you have to notify yeah. the doctor and stuff like that yeah so you should be able to know that after that you have to write the lab values you know the rbc the cbc you know lab values and everything put it on paper I mean, let's that sign it, you know, yeah. and all the other two nurses too. I mean, the other, they will do the same thing. Okay. 
and print it out. Yeah. That's, so, that's a very meticulous process. Right. All because somebody died. Okay. You know what I mean? So it's, it depends. It's the experience. You okay. know, that, that hospital or facility has you no know, experience, you know, with that type of drug, you know. So in short, you are yeah. saying that the travel nursing affords you the opportunity to like experience other hospitals and learn yeah. more about and learn more about different countries across they kinda, the country. Yeah, because every hospital, every environment you find yourself in, you have to know their policies, their okay. protocols, the way they do things. Yeah. You cannot just get up and say, oh, this is how this hospital used to do their thing, so I'm going to do the same thing. No. Okay. That's going to get you into trouble. Yeah, so it makes you learn <coughs> a lot. Okay. Yeah, and you always, it's like you're always learning, you always and every hospital you go you have to do in-service training you have to do this you have to do that you know what i mean yeah. yeah orientation and stuff like that so it's like it gives you that opportunity to also know much and learn more also so the question then becomes why are travel nurses paid so much because i read an article mm -hmm. uh, on cnbc the other day and was talking about a travel nurse who said he earned one hundred and ninety seven thousand dollars uh, last year and he, he was working he worked for only nine months in a year why are they paid so much because you're going to abandon your home okay okay you're going you're going to leave your family and move to a different place and moving to that place one is going to come with housing you have to get a place to stay okay you you need to drive or you need to get your i mean some means of transportation some agencies provide transportation you know for people yeah but you have to find that okay okay you're going to be paying your rent here and your rent back home yeah okay so uh, in order um, for you to travel, you need to make sure the money that you're going in for is good. It's something that can take care of you. You know what I mean? Yeah. That can that can help sort out the mortgage or the rent here and there, okay. and be able to also save. Okay. Yeah. So that is one of the things too. Because and uh, I think you ask why they get paid more because that's what i know when you're a traveler being a staff nurse you get the opportunity to have uh, health insurance you know from the uh, facility, facility okay. at a low rate right now i mean most agencies or most travel agencies have i mean insurance but okay. it doesn't really last for too long after three months you have to renew it okay. you know what i mean once the contract is over you have to but when you are with the hospital they i mean you you have very good you know insurance yeah. over there to you have also you also have like a, you're able to get your 401k where some hospitals even buy stocks or you know invest in your 401k okay. for you okay. you know what i mean yeah. but as a traveler i mean how do i have 401k and i have insurance with my travel agency yeah. but uh it's different from being a staff nurse where the hospital can have like about twenty five thousand dollars shares you know okay. for buy like uh, put twenty five invest for about twenty five thousand fifty thousand dollars you know into uh your 401k oh so, so if hospitals you, do that yeah Oh great! Yep. If you are staff over there, they they, when, they they buy stocks and shares for you, yeah. like 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 the tech companies do. Yep. Oh yep. my god. So yeah, so that's what they invest your four one k in. You okay. know what I mean? Yeah. So my job, my my last job that I quit, yeah, before traveling, okay. I had like uh, about twenty five to fifty thousand dollars. Okay. Which if I had stayed with that hospital for about five years, that money would have been mine. Okay. But trust me, I mean, after I quit, I, I made even more than that. Yeah. Yeah. I made more than that in a what? In just three months. As a travel nurse. As a travel okay. nurse. Okay. In, I mean, my first travel assignment, I made like about over $90,000. You know? Okay. Yeah, for my first travel assignment. In, in, within the three months period. Within the three month period. Are you kidding me? Yep. <laughs> so, 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 wait. So you mean that? Then I was doing extra shifts. So you know, some travelers that? were getting paid like what? It was a time that you getting paid like about ten thousand dollars, thirteen thousand, even fifteen thousand dollars. There were some for, for a week. A week. Yep. Oh. Yep. So, so just so, do the calculation. So, so typically, how much do travel nurses make in a year? In a year, our, our family, they are what? <laughs> if I if I put that figure out, somebody's gonna be like, oh, this guy. <laughs> no, 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 I mean you can. You okay, can I'm just gonna range. give an average, a range, a range. Typically, like uh, when travel nursing was at its highest peak when COVID was there, yeah. nurses were making like average, an average, like in a year they were making like over 200, 250000 to and above, I would say average. No, 250000 and above. Yep, yeah, over $250,000 and above, you know. Wow. Some people were making half a million dollars, you know. 50000 to $500,000. Yes. Half a million as a travel nurse. As a travel nurse. Wow. If you're really ready to work, put in that's, the that's, extra hours. That's crazy. It, it is crazy. And that was my first time, you know, having to experience, you know, such amount of cash. But if I was a staff, a staff nurse, do you think 
think I was going to be making that amount of money? No, no. No, no I don't no, think no. so. You know what I mean? I, but, I don't but, think but, so. But, but now that travel, yeah, because now you realize that travel rates are coming up. And I, I expected some of these things to happen because I realized that a lot of other medical professionals, I, I even read about some articles where doctors were complaining about the rates that travel mm-hmm. nurses are being paid. And I'm sure a lot of viewers have, have seen some of those articles. Mm-hmm. Do you think that travel rates are going to go up again? Oh, travel rates, it's, it's definitely going to go up because I know definitely we're going to have another pandemic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is that a prayer? Well, or is, as is long, that a... It's not a prayer. As long as we keep living, you know, uh-huh. we are still breeding. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we are still humans. Oh, come on. Ooh, something, I, some I, 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 I diseases think, I think, and sickness think... keep evolving. It keeps coming every well, time. I don't want to say it's this gonna, is selfish. No, no, but, but... but, but just be, you are a nurse. Like, you should know that. Like, there was the flu. I mean, the Spanish flu or whatever flu came. It killed so many people. Every, like, within, like, a, I think a decade or, like, every 20 years or 15 or whatever, something happens. You know what I mean? Yeah, so let's say yeah. COVID is so, fast and gone. So, I'm not predicting that or I'm, I'm not saying, okay, I'm not <laughs> saying that it should come. Yeah. Because I don't want people, you know yeah to die i don't want to see people dying but I, at the same time i it is gonna happen as I, the world evolves. i realize that you're not the only one saying this because i was reading just this week that the omicron variant seems to be resurfacing in some places i mean how many types of covid do we have i and mean it's giving like coming. different and, and they are saying that it looks somebody went to costco the other day and and, and he said he, he can almost swear people are preparing for another pandemic because people were just packing the tissue papers and all of that just like it happened during covid and mm-hmm. all of that yeah yeah it, it is because sometimes you have to be one thing about me right now is i just traveling also has i mean opened my mind also exposed okay. me to so many things okay. you have to have an open mind about everything that you do right now don't just be like oh why is he talking why is he saying no oh, another we're gonna have another pandemic just because of the money no mm-hmm. it is reality it is yeah. real yeah these things who who thought there was gonna be COVID in 2020 or between 2019 and 2020 okay. nobody who thought there was gonna be a lockdown where we had to stay home for yeah. like over a year you know without seeing people without having to even hug you know get a chance to even hug or you know shake people yeah nobody 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 thought that so <laughs> as the world is evolving these things i mean should be expected well and let's let's people let's, are let's, too stubborn too so <laughs> let's just put this behind us and and and, and pray hope and pray that uh, it doesn't happen well i mean oh, well, i'm I, not gonna pray though <laughs> <laughs> i have not experienced i want to retire so <laughs> i want to retire early <laughs> uh, well i have not experienced covid so i don't know how it feels like <laughs> in the u.s but 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 the question i wanted to ask you is that i mean i have had a chance to work in the uk i work in ghana and i'm in the US. My question is that why is it that nurses in the US are paid so much? Because nurses in the UK or in Canada do, do not get the kind of pay that nurses in the US get. Apart from the country being a rich country, what else? Because I, I know that even in the US, nurses are paid 7% higher than the national um, average, okay, according to the Bureau of, 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 of Labor Statistics. So why do nurses in the US get paid so much? Do you think nurses in the US are, um, are be paid, are be, well, are well, paid well, you know, much? I, I mean, I, I like they are also complaining before that they are COVID, being underpaid. Before, <laughs> before COVID, I mean, yeah, we were being underpaid. Okay. I was working in the ICU and I was making like what? I would say like about 30, 40, 35 dollars an hour or something like that. You okay. know, working nine shifts. Okay. You know, and it wasn't that even those ones, uh, it comes with incentives like nine, you know, nine differentials. differentials and other stuff. That will add up to the weekend differentials, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So um we were being underpaid but when COVID hit and you uh, you see how expensive you know rent is over here and the thing is it's not that because uh, the the pay when you come to america over here i think it varies i mean state by state okay washington state over here nurses over nurses in washington state uh they get they've been enjoying that high you know pay even before COVID hit mm. yeah they were being paid high because when i was in nebraska where i was doing my staff job i was receiving like uh nothing less than you know 35 dollars you know what i mean with everything but around that time before COVID, nurses over in washington state were making like about what 44 to 45 dollars so some were making like about 37 between 37 to you know 40 or 44 45 dollars you know what i mean yeah that was for like a new i mean graduate you know nurse yeah yeah so 
it depends on the cost of living in that state okay and the percentage you know um because over here the minimum wage any the minimum wage actually so it yeah. varies state by state okay yeah so that's how it is so sometimes it will make you feel or think like our nurses over here are being paid more but it's just the minimum wage you know that is you know kind of working you know the, the, the other thing so talking about states i realized that one of the most attractive states for nurses to work in the u.s and Nurses Richie has said this several times. What is California? What do you think is the reason California. why California is such an attractive place for nurses to work? Uh, shortage of uh, shortage, short, shortage of nurses. California? Not just California. Nationwide. Yeah, nationwide. So, and, uh, so why the is population, California? the people over there. Okay. And I would say race also can plays another role too because it's a lot of sick patient people over there too. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah, because over there, when you go to place like New York, California, Washington, and stuff mm -hmm. like that, you should expect like so many different people from different countries, different you know yeah. places, you know living I, I, there. I also and, read about uh, the fact that they have a lot of union support. Their unions give them have a lot of power, and they're able to negotiate a lot of juicy overtime pay, which is not like. Uh, oh, I love California. Yeah. So, so California. What, what, California has a very high, you know, minimum wage also. Okay. It's expensive over there. Okay. Because some travelers I know were paying like over two thousand dollars, three thousand dollars for just rent. Okay. You didn't care. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because they were making the money. Yeah. Yeah. Uh rent over there in, uh, rent over in California, you know you know you pay anything less than thousand dollars for okay. rent. Okay. Yeah. For a month. That's like maybe one bedroom. Okay not like the whole apartment just one just one room because when i was in california i i was so lucky i was renting one one room mm -hmm. but i had a, ba a bathroom and everything you know i had my microwave and fridge everything in there so it was just my bathroom and my bedroom and i had uh, my small mini fridge over there i was paying about thousand one fifty or something yeah. every month for just that room so, yeah, so what, just what imagine over time loss in california like over like... time over there is very is very sweet i loved it Mm. Uh, I would all I would all, I would always go to California to to work okay because um, over there they pay it's double time okay double time and also once you hit 32 hours everything after 32 hours also is double time oh okay so it's not yeah. even time and half so when you time. do when you do overtime in California mm -hmm. man that's money okay it is money because because I realize it's a very good place. People talk about how nurses are so well paid, especially in Northern California, because their pay is similar, but the standard of living is, is quite lower there. Mm -hmm. And and I know that it's a bit difficult for international educated nurses to work because the California Board of Nursing requires that nurses do uh, lab work for microbiology and anatomy, mm -hmm. which is not the case in a lot of countries. For example, when I was going to nursing training school, mm -hmm. we didn't have lab time for anatomy and microbiology it was i think it's it's during the bachelor's degree that some universities are beginning to implement that so what do you think as as some of the really good states for nurses who want to be travel nurses here in the u.s oh i would say california new york okay technically i don't know if i'll be able to work in or stay in new york but the money can take me there okay yeah why and one thing is it's not just you know being a nurse because one let me let me let me just point this thing out over here in america we have the compact state okay license yeah not every nurse can work in any state okay you have to have a like you have to be licensed in that state okay first of all that's one thing you should put in mind before you can work in different states the we ha i think right now it's about over 35 states or over 30 states are, are compact. compact yeah because because i know washington wasn't recently they, they, washington this yeah. last year november or yeah. so mm -hmm. september they, or something they become they became compact uh, last year but california yeah. is still not compact california is not compact you but have to apply Texas for Texas is compact Texas is is compact state new york is new york compact. is not compact not you have compact. to get okay. new york license to okay. be able to work in new york okay yeah so you have to get licenses you have to get but you don't have to go take another NCLEX. yeah you just have to apply okay do fingerprint over there uh send your transcript and uh, other stuff over there and wait you know for them to mm. approve you that, that's all you need okay yeah so you, first of all you have to have that lines you have to be licensed in that in that state first before you can you know work in these type of states that we are talking about okay yeah yeah so the best states as you said um you california california, california new, york. new york and texas too was uh was good texas yeah, yeah texas i know was i good. know texas is a good place because they have uh, their, their houses 
are not too expensive because when I moved to the US, the community liaison was telling me that the homeowners, I mean, the, the nurses who came to Texas the previous year had already started buying homes mm -hmm. just after a year. Of oh, yeah, I know so many people that bought homes uh, in, yeah, in Texas within a year. Because I had a friend, a lady friend who I was doing travel, traveling in California with, and she, 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 she was living in Maryland. And, okay. But she bought a house in Texas. Okay. Yeah. I mean, how do you, how do you think a nurse at her age was gonna be able to accumulate or make that money yeah. to buy a house? And you know, we know one thing. This lady, she was furnishing her house. Okay. And just just see the and uh, the kind of things that she was buying. You know, uh, furniture. <laughs> I mean, very expensive. Okay. Even me myself as a traveler was like, well, so I was just looking at her. I was just I was like, wow, you buying like a chair for like ten thousand dollars. Wow, a so a ten thousand dollars. I mean, sofa. I mean, she she want her place look very. I mean, her Classy. table top like about five, three thousand dollars. Man, <laughs> furnishing her home only. She spent about thirty five to forty thousand dollars just furnishing her new home. That's How do you think? Uh, I mean, where do you think she was gonna make this money if she was, you know, staff? That's a travel yes. nurse. Yeah, that's a travel nurse. You ask a travel nurse. Why are you travel nurses so loud? Why do you show so much wealth? We know you have money, but, but why do you like to show it off? We don't show it off. We just want yeah, people to also, you because know. Because I see a lot of see, travel nurses on the internet talking about, oh, I made three, three, three fifty no, no, k no, no, here. No. If that's how, if people see that way, maybe they, they, I mean, they are getting carried away because of the money they are mentioning over there. Okay. There. But I think they are just excited because people, we, we were not making this amount of money hmm. when we were uh, staff nurses. So they feel like other nurses who, have that courage you know that confidence you know to be because first of all you have to have courage to be able to be a travel nurse okay you have to be confident about yourself yeah that's true yeah you cannot not everybody can be a travel nurse yeah i mean it's true because yeah. when i was so, in the uk i did some agency nursing which will be the british version of the american travel nursing and and, and having to go and work in other hospitals like Lincoln and Hall and all of that, I realized that you need to be really confident and know what you're doing because yep. it's, it's, it can be a bit intimidating. A, a very intimidating, especially when some staff nurses who, I mean, I don't know what they think about travelers. <laughs> I don't know. We, I don't know if they are they're in the hospital or maybe they are using their, their money to pay. I don't know. I don't even know yeah. why some staff nurses even hate on, you know, travelers. Yeah. When they see a traveler, they feel like, oh, you are making this, you are making so much. So as they expect you you to know everything they expect you to do everything and stuff like that and, and that that has been one of the challenges you know what yeah. i mean so if you're not confident you're not bold you're not well prepared you know enthused about um whatever you are doing you want to do and focused yeah. you cannot okay you cannot do it so these people just want to put it out there to let people who are confident you know people that cannot come out of the shell to, because to yeah, because we, do you know that nurses nurses are like a family? Yeah. Yeah. When you work on the ward, DC in the morning, be like, oh, let's go on a coffee, you know. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go have coffee. Let's go have dinner, you know. Like we are family. Yeah. You know, we see each other. We see ourselves as you know brothers and sisters. You know, as one big family. So them doing that or putting, I mean, that over there is just trying to like they're just trying to let people know, hey. This is what we've discovered. They are not like our African brothers and sisters who, you know, when they make something, they don't want to show people the way. Yeah. It's like what we are talking about. Okay. They just want to show people the way, okay. you know, to be financially free if okay. they want to, if they have that confidence, if they have that boldness. Okay, so going forward, before before I ask you any question, I'd like to thank you viewers for keeping faith with the channel and watching the interview after this time. If you are enjoying this interview, please go ahead and like the video. Leave a comment in the comment section. I know there are a lot of questions that some of you would have wanted me to ask, but I may not have asked the questions. But, but the comment section is always open. Let me know your views and I'll definitely get them through to the panelists. And I'm also going to ask the next guest if there are questions that you want me to ask. Just go ahead and leave them in the comment section and I'll be sure to ask those questions. So please, going forward, the next question is that the U.S. is often regarded as a land of opportunities for nurses. What are some of the opportunities or what are some of the jobs that nurses can do in the U.S. apart from being at the bedside? I mean, almost everybody wants to leave the bedside at some point in time. What are some opportunities that people have 
or some jobs people can do? There's so many opportunities in being a nurse in the US, especially okay. when you have that license. Okay. And um, and especially when you hold like uh, your RNBSN degree or maybe your RN degree or whatever degree. You have. Um, regardless of whatever license you hold or you have, there's so many opportunities in being a nurse. You have you have the opportunity, as you said, to leave the bedside okay. and um, uh, do so many things. You you have the opportunity to become. Uh, uh, director of nursing in a, in a care agency mm. home or something like that. Yeah, you know what I mean. You know okay. what I'm saying. Like um, you have that opportunity. Also, there's this called uh, nursing informatics. Okay, where um, it's basically like a nurse. You know, IT. You you, you deal with like a lot of IT stuff. Oh, okay. you know, in nursing. Like an informatician. We, yep. We know nurses. We, we we that's what we work with. Yeah. Um, Epic and um, Serna. Serna. <laughs> Um, the, the, the UK, the UK. Yep, so many, so many. You know, we use so many softwares in our, in our, and I mean, you are tired of bedside and you yeah. want to uh, delve into that. You just take one or two or few, you know, courses and you know, you just um, get into that field and become that. Yeah. And also, you have the opportunity to also open your own nursing care facility or nursing um, agency. Oh, like an yeah. adult family, adult home, family and home and stuff like nursing that. Skilled nursing facility. Okay. You, you, you can also do that as long as you have your license. Yeah. You, all you need to do is just apply for that and you go through the process. And as long as you don't have any criminal records or anything like that. And, uh, you know, as a nurse in the U.S., every nurse is very careful. Yeah. Yeah, because one, you can't even do weed or smoke weed or stuff yeah. like that. Oh, you really? Know, well, you, you get you get tested. Okay. You do drug tests. Okay. Especially okay. Um, being a travel nurse, every year you have to do drug testing. Okay. So if you're a weed smoker or you do drugs or whatever, you cannot. Okay. So it's always like you're always on the right path. I mean, it guides you. It helps you also um, physically. You know oh, what I mean? Okay. It helps you also. And health-wise, it helps you also. Yeah, you can but also you, you spoke about the fact that they can we can own a school nursing facility and an adult family home. I worked with a nurse who said she was she she has an adult family home, uh -huh. and um, she she plans on making it bigger and all of that. Uh -huh. Is it is it like an expensive thing to to start? Because well, I know some, some nurses are interested. It is. In, you can stand it. I mean, little. I mean, you can stand it very small. Okay. And and grow it. Okay. Especially, let me give you an example. If you want to start, you can start in, in a care facility or like a, you can a nursing home agency or like a home agency. Okay. By applying to the state and taking maybe one client, one one okay. one person to care for. Okay. Um, all you need to do is uh, just apply, get a place or an apartment or okay. a place where. Uh, the state will come in and investigate. I mean, like, uh, come, in, come in and do inspection. Okay. Inspect the place and make sure it's a conducive area and okay. place for um, this particular person that they are going to give you. So once you have that person, that person becomes your friend, becomes a part of you. That person is going to live with you. So you're responsible for, the, for that person 24-7. Oh, okay. So you it's get more like paid. in your home. Like yes. if you have an, a spare room that you can use for an Airbnb. You, yep. You can use that to and, apply for a license. Yep. And to, if to that place qualifies, you know, yeah. Yeah, the state, that's why yeah. the state has to come in and inspect. If, if you do that, they will come in and inspect and if they, they approve that, they will give you the person and you become responsible of that person. Mm -hmm. they, 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 are, they are health, I mean health-wise, you have to be responsible taking care of, of their doctor's appointments, their medications and stuff like that. Yeah. You, you also have to, I mean, their physical well-being, mm -hmm. buying clothes and shoes and everything for them. Okay. So they, they will pay you at the end of the month, you okay. know, plus what the money that you have to use to take care of, you know, this individual. And you can but do all of this you with, can your, do with, all your, with your RN license. Yes. Even not just RN license, even if you are a uh, licensed, you know, practitioner nurse. Okay. Or you are like a CNA certified nursing assistant, people do that. Okay. Yeah, you can, uh, as long as you don't have any criminal records or anything like that, and you have a license to be able to take care of someone, even as a CNA, you can, you do, can that. do that. And you also people mentioned that, that you but can you can have a staffing company. Yes. So that is what people, that's how sometimes some people start with that. Or mm -hmm. sometimes too, you can start going to people's home, you know, to take care of their like you know, care. loved ones and home stuff care. like that. You can have like one or two people and uh, you go there, you know, do full-time, part-time or whatever. Mm -hmm. So there's so many ways in, you know, getting into 
uh, this kind of agency thing. And uh, I think everyone with a licensed, I mean, licensed nursing degree or yeah. licensed nursing certificate can be able to do it. But as an RNBS, and if you want to do it big, as I'm saying, you have the opportunity to do or to make it big, to do it big. Because, I think, I think uh, the, the home care they can, is they, really increasing here in the US because people are actually venturing into it a lot. Right. And it's booming. Right. Right, because it's a lot of sick people. It's a yeah. lot of, you know, uh, so, mentally So the American Ill, population unstable. is aging. They are living longer. Exactly. But they, a lot of the young people are not getting into nursing. Yeah, right. So there is always yeah. shortage. Yeah, so you have that opportunity to open your own care facility or care home, you know, mm -hmm. agency. You also become financially stable also. Yeah. You can also become, yeah, as an, especially as an RN traveler. Yeah. You know, like myself yeah um you have the opportunity to travel to different states yeah different facilities experience different you know work environment different culture because every state has its own culture, culture. you know so it kind of broadens your thinking open your mind you know um gives you an overview of how things are done anywhere and it kind of helps you uh in your life also so I think there's so many opportunities in being a nurse and also being a travel nurse. And you do the travel nurse and still secure the bag. Exactly. That's <laughs> the most important so, thing. So I'm there's, not cap there's one that. important question I want to ask. Because when I moved to the US and I was doing my orientation, the, the chief nurse of the hospital came and told us that, you know, she worked, she graduated and started working in the 80s as a nurse. And mm -hmm. the year she started working, there was nursing staff shortage and people were being recruited from overseas to the US. It is 2024 and I, I have colleagues who are still being recruited into the US to work as nurses. Do you think that this whole situation of perennial nurse, nursing shortage in the US is ever going to end? No. Really? It, as you mentioned, it's been there since the 80s. So you don't uh, think nursing shortage I don't is ever going so. to end? I don't think it's going to end. Yeah. Because it's a lot of people in this world. So so why why and why are people just 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 situation? look at it this way. There's a lot of people in this world, okay? And one of the most visited uh, areas or you know ventures in the world is hospitals. As long as we have people, people also get sick. But yeah. we don't. But we have people that have different ambitions, you know, career path they okay. have taken. Not everyone want to be a nurse because some people cannot stand the sight of blood. Okay. Yeah. Some people cannot stand the sight of seeing uh, a very sick, you know, person. You yeah, know, like Sonia. Yeah. Do that. Some people cannot. Okay. Even even we know that 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 will even take me back to the question you asked me because. There's a lot of nurses that cannot work in the ICU, okay. although they are nurses. Why? Because they can't stand the side of blood. Okay. They can't stand, you know, the side of like, you know, pressing on somebody's chest, like doing CPR. Yeah. They can't stand the, I mean, the side of a patient being intubated. Okay. Yeah. Now, I've had so many nurses that get floated onto the ICU floor to take off message patients on the ICU floor and they panic even on even insulin drip or insulin you know on even insulin they don't even know how to do it you know what I mean so people are I mean embarking on you know different career field and stuff like that so and there's a lot so just imagine we have all these people that cannot stand this the sight of blood and other things but you know few people are able to do what you know we are doing so definitely yeah there's gonna be shortage of nurses and people keep getting sick and we get a, we're getting exposed to so many things you know in this world especially i mean radiation okay. uh stuff okay. like that a lot okay. of cancer these days uh, if you work in a hospital okay you testify that so a lot of mental illness diseases people yeah. are aging but but and stuff my, like that my question is that why I mean, when you read articles on LinkedIn these days, you realize that it's telling that one in three nurses speaks about leaving their job within the next year. If nursing is seen as such a lucrative career here in the US, why are thousands of nurses planning to leave their jobs? Bro, why do they leave their job so much? Bro, working as a nurse is it's not an easy job. It's not, it's not easy. Especially going to work and working for like, what, a full 12 hours. Somebody will be like, oh, it's just 12 hours. Bro, it's not 12 hours. A whole lot of things happen there and imagine going to work and not having enough staff enough people to help you you know carry on your duties uh, there's this saying that i think i read i saw it says uh the nurse can help someone do their job but nobody can help the nurse you know i do mean their do job. their job okay yeah it's like so when you go to work you're just responsible for your patient your patient yourself yeah. and everything that goes on over there so you are doing a whole lot so you mean the stress level the stress level is high 
we feel like we are not getting paid you know as much as we 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 supposed to you know be paid especially being a staff nurse okay you know what i mean yeah so technically people get burned out okay. and people uh, you always getting burned out your feet is hurting yeah i mean you you also getting exposed to you know certain type of you know the, i've hurt myself in a job before mm. I, I I broke I, I I injured my I sprained my knee. Yeah. I got twisted was in a coat. Okay. That could have ended my life. Yeah. Over there, maybe I, I could have become disabled over there, yeah. not being able to work if okay. it was like so serious. Because there was a patient that was coding and uh, was we were trying to you know do what we do every day, and uh, in the course of that. Uh, I got twisted. I mean, I got entangled by one of the uh, coat cuts, you okay. know, cords, and uh, twisted my, you know, knee. Yeah. Fell. Okay. Was trying to save someone who is dying. Yeah. I so get now it. they have to t even take me to the ED. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I um, mean, it's a whole lot that happens so, on so, the job. So basically, you mean life, the stress level. The stress level is a lot. And people also speak about toxicity in the units. People are toxic <sighs> work environments and toxic colleagues and toxic managers. Do you are you okay to speak to if, that? If if a, if a unit is well organized, I think yeah. that toxicity, you know, it's not gonna, I mm -hmm. mean, work okay. or happen. I mean, happen. I know this hospital that I'm currently working there. They're like there's like one or two flaws that when you work there. Yeah. I mean, you feel that, you know, unity, that yeah. teamwork. Yeah. Yeah, there, are some, there are some flaws that you go, it's like everyone, you know, yeah. people don't care. Yeah. And uh, we are experiencing these things, especially as we as travelers. Okay. We, we experience this toxic, you know, kind of life a lot. Because okay. when you go to this facility or like this hospital or this, you need to work, uh, the staff, nurses over there, they, because they are being underpaid, and they see you as a traveler earning, you know, more or higher than what they are earning. Yeah. Then they, they, I mean, they become jealous of what you are making and yeah. don't even want you to succeed okay. because they, <laughs> I don't know why. It's, yeah. it's just part of people. I don't okay. know what these people or some of these people, you know, get from yeah. all these things. Yeah. So it's a whole lot. And one of the things about nursing that I just want to emphasize when you the legal aspect yeah the legal aspect yeah so every so talk, time you talking go, about the legal aspect I realize nurses a lot of nurses are getting sued these days we know about the Radonda one case who gave a wrong drug in the mm -hmm. ICU and went to jail and all of that mm -hmm. why is there so much legal tussle these days that the is legal? the thing and that is what makes nurses big become very anxious you know very scared when they go to work okay. because they feel like every little mistake you know that will come from you or will happen it's on you okay because they feel like you're responsible for everything yeah and that's one thing that sometimes nurses don't understand why hospitals cannot stand in for nurses yeah it's one of the things that me myself as a nurse it bothers me okay that why is it that a nurse will do something and maybe in the course of that the person might lose their life yeah. and they the family or the people or whoever i mean this nurse will get sued and the hospital will not even fight for this person okay I get it. Anyway, but, yeah. but but what I want to ask is, what are some of the difficult challenges you've had to deal with as a nurse in the U.S. with patients? Because I'll tell you a story. One time I was working with a patient, and it's one of the new things that happened to me when I came to the U.S. So a patient missed his medication by about 10 minutes because I had a post-op patient. So the patient who I was treating, who had medication that he was supposed to receive at particular times, he missed it for about 10 minutes. He was so angry when I came to him. He told me that if this is how you are going to behave, then you will not enjoy America. <laughs> <laughs> and and that's, a racist, coming, that's a racist guy. Well, well, a and racist coming, patient coming, coming, you have. Coming from Ghana and the UK, I mean, this was, I was quite surprised. So I went back and told him that this is what happened and I'm sorry, but I'm just doing the best under the, the circumstance and all of that. And then he, he was okay. But what, are some, what are some of the like, the, like, like the uh, un unpleasant or challenging experiences you've had as a nurse in the US? Oh, I mean, you know, you get, you get abused a lot. <laughs> what do you, you mean? You abuse? get abused by patients a lot. Okay. Because over here in, in America, the patient is always they right. have a lot of rights. Mm -hmm. okay. you know, almost most of the time, the patient is always right. Okay. And they feel like when they're in the hospital, 
you're in a five star hotel okay where they need to be served as you yeah. know as queens and kings and, and, they, and uh, they get they what they want that is a hospital that they are in and the nurse that is responsible for them is not just taking care of one patient yeah. but what two or three or four or many patients you know and yeah. they are all you know demanding for the same thing that you and you just one person okay. then they want you and they expect you to be able to do what they ask for them right away and that's not gonna that's not how things work yeah and even if that's how things work we have protocols we follow yeah you know but as i'm saying like we get abused a lot especially when somebody doesn't get their medicine on time or their yeah. pain medicine on time or they don't get something that they request you know giving to them on time yeah. they get pissed off and they nail that on you and they start you know yeah. saying all sort of stuff trying to even report you and even get you into trouble and stuff and also as a black guy yeah racism i mean <laughs> i've been called out so many times by you know these older folks you know i mean black guy you know like they've been yeah racial, oh, you, you mean the patients? calling me a black guy and stuff yeah they they have yeah i mean it's a whole lot like yeah. you face a lot i can say uh, i mean some of the things on camera but you you have some abusing you calling you all kinds of names and stuff like that yeah and it happens but i don't care i mean yeah. the thing is like i'll tell you hey you know what i don't even want to be here so okay. if you are trying to refuse something or you're freezing care from a black guy thank god <laughs> you're reducing my workload okay yeah you know sometimes if you don't have to really even sometimes pay attention to all the, some of the, the things that happens on the unit okay. or on the floor whilst working and um there was this especially like as you said uh, in the icu also sometimes you get very challenging patients uh very crazy patients sometimes you have a patient on the floor i mean that is being protected or guarded by the police or something okay. like that yeah. or sometimes the police is not there but it is you as the nurse your job to make sure this person doesn't leave leave or yeah. run because the, this person this person is once this person get this person gets discharged you're going to prison straight yeah, yeah. you're going to jail so uh, you're responsible for this person yeah there was one time i had a i had a patient and uh, this guy was driving with a friend and he the, the, the guy already had, was on probation so they got pulled over by the police mm -hmm. and this guy swallowed like about 19 you know gram of you know <laughs> or 20 gram of cocaine okay <laughs> you know yeah okay. because he didn't he was trying to prevent it i mean because he didn't want to go to jail okay if him, you know such substance was seen you know yeah. on him so he swallowed that but later on i mean he started you know yeah so they, <laughs> he was taken to the hospital uh, to the ed he came to our ed and uh, made on the icu floor because uh you know that can lead to cardiac yeah. cardiac you know arrest and you know stuff a whole lot and um this guy came and the security and the police the police brought him and uh the security down there they were supposed to search this guy they told us they searched everything their belongings and stuff like that he came up to my floor and uh i was uh, happened to be the nurse i mean and uh i went in there i was i was like i wasn't and this guy was going to jail right from there Okay. so i was like okay let me let me check this guy again because i don't trust this guy i mean okay. looking at this guy he's got tattoos all over you know his face you okay. know <laughs> body yeah very scary guy you know what i mean okay. and <laughs> oh my god and i was like let me check this guy check this guy I checked his belongings and i saw like a pocket knife you know okay. in there i'm like i caught it i'm like did you guys really check this guy did the police even check this guy did you guys even look at all these things before sending this person up here mm. you know so i took the i took the knife and i was like well this is what i found i'm gonna i'm gonna hand it over to security okay, okay. so i'm not gonna and uh the the sister was there she was like well i i can take the knife and i'm like i'm sorry you are not a patient so i don't have to you know give that you have to give it to security She's okay like, well i mean what if I, I i also have a gun or i have a knife here and i'm like that's up to you but uh, you need to mind your language. You need to mind your words because uh, you don't want to get kicked out of here because uh, there's a hospital and I'm dealing with my patient, not you. Okay. Okay. So, and over there, if <laughs> you happen to have someone who's crazy, yeah. I mean, you hear stories of nurses being attacked, yeah. you know, outside work because of all these things and stuff like that. So it's a whole lot. There was one time I was in California working as a traveler and this guy, crazy guy, he kept asking for, you know, pain medicine, this and that. And uh, like, nope, I'm not going to give it to you. And uh, I tried to let a guy know he's not even going out of his room and stuff like that. And uh, he was like, well, well, 
that's fine, but uh, I'll see you outside, you know. And I'm like, what do you mean you see me outside? <laughs> I'm like, he's like, well, I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm ready. Let's go outside. Well, sometimes too, you have to protect yourself, yeah. you know. So sometimes you have to also show them that you, you're there. So because you don't want to. And sometimes when these things, they, when these people say these, these things, you don't take it, they'll do it. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I was like, I started taking my, my jacket off and, I, you know, trying to show my body to let yeah. the guy know that me too, you know. <laughs> If you want to do it, let's go do it now okay. <laughs> and get over it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But so it's a whole lot of, you know, crazy challenges, you know, that comes with the job and uh, bad, you know, experience. So, and so, also, we also risk our lives also. Yeah. yeah. That's why sometimes you see some nurses hiding their last names and stuff like yeah. that. So, you know, so what, what do you have to tell internationally educated nurses who are looking to migrate here and they are anxious about, or who have migrated here and they are anxious about the settling in process? Like, are they going to find their feet? Are they going to survive and make it in the u.s and all of that everyone what, what do you have you're going to them? survive okay one thing is um choosing this i mean career you know line i mean requires you the person being to be confident you know you have to be confident mm -hmm. yeah and um just know that when you get on a certain floor a certain unit or a rich house whichever hospital you are going to work first of all just try try as much as you can to pay attention to all the pro policies and the protocols and the way they do things over okay. there because you don't have to be anxious for no reason okay just do as it is mm just follow the line just do what did they want how they want to do their things just do it that's how you need that's how you're going to survive yeah don't be don't be don't be this guy don't don't feel like you you just like someone who just came from a different country doesn't know anything so no you know americans are very welcoming especially when they know you from a different country yeah. and uh, you get closer to them and stuff like that or even you ask questions they are always happy willing you know to you know help you yeah, that's so i think uh, you shouldn't be nervous you shouldn't be discouraged just be yourself and learn try to learn and ask questions okay yeah so in conclusion do you do you think that nursing has had a positive impact on your life i mean oh a lot. i know that when people hear the, the nursing profession some people re regard it as a very respected highly respected profession i mean it has been voted as the most trusted profession for six years in a row here in the u.s but some patients and some other people also see the nurse as a mate to use that word or somebody who's just here to serve them how has nursing helped or shaped your life and what do you think about nursing profession as a whole? That's a very good question. Nursing, nursing has really shaped my life. And although the fact that we've been voted for like the past six you know, consecutive year, mm -hmm. years of being, you know, that record holder, I would say COVID changed everything, you know, the most. Okay. I would say uh, after COVID, nurses, their respect for nurses increased. Okay. Doctors started respecting nurses. Mm -hmm. Even I have nurse practitioners who are, who, 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 who even left their, you know, nurse practitioner or DNP degrees to yeah. become nurses and travel as nurses because why are doctors respecting nurses these days because they know they are also earning almost the same or the same as they are earning yeah so what again can you do mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what i mean like you can flaunt or you can do it yeah. whatever you are earning or whatever you are doing if the person becomes a traveler they're also going to make almost the same as you're making yeah yeah patient now they've all been educated they know that now when they hear that you are a nurse and also you are a traveler they do what they start respecting you because they know man you guys are making money okay. so now he cannot disrespect you because he even knows that you are even making money more than him <laughs> okay you know what i mean yeah. yeah so i think after 2020 2020 has really COVID has it's a it's a blessing in disguise i would say yeah to nurses so, so what are some of the personal benefits that financial you know financially uh nurses has become how uh, most nurses have become you know financially stable you 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 as a person me as a person i'm just <laughs> trying to make it as a whole <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't want them to come at me. Oh. <laughs> the next morning they'll be calling me like hey But I mean whether you say it or not, people already ask you. People already come come at you, don't they? I know right. They always come in oh, at you. Call, you call it the black tax. I know right. Yeah, you have people at home always texting you. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah, but after the interview you'll be like, hey this guy, okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but me, me personally, as I say, I was trying to generalize it, but I, it has really helped me, you know, do a whole lot of things. I've been able to start businesses, you know, for being a traveler. Okay. You know, do so many things for myself, and uh, I think life is very, very comfortable right now for me. I'm, I'm, I'm okay. Yeah. I'm okay. 
Great, great. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm okay. Nice. And I've also learned a lot. Okay. Because uh, I've been working from facility, you know, to facility nurse in hospital to not hospital, moving from one hospital to the other. Uh, it has really shaped my, you know, knowledge. It has really, yeah. you know, helped me understand so many things and uh, I've grown in skills. Okay. Yeah. Because right now I know a whole lot. Okay. So yeah, that's so, most staff nurses don't even know. Yeah. I, I don't want to ask you, this will be the final question just before, but like I said, please go ahead and like the video if you're enjoying the interview subscribe to the channel that would be a huge favor to us here and leave a comment in the comment section it will help guide our information as to the kind of questions to ask our next guest and, 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 and so on and so forth but I've been reading these days that a lot of American nurses are broke does that come to you as a surprise it depends, it depends on how you manage your finances okay yep as I was saying like trust me there are some trouble nurses that there are some people that they're traveling and right, right now if you ask them you know you ask them about their financial you know level financial mm -hmm. level right now I mean they are back to zero nothing to write home yeah about. Because uh, I was telling you earlier that I had a friend who, you know, bought a house and finished the, the home for like about forty-five thousand dollars. Used about thirty to forty forty thousand to finish the house. Yeah. You wow. know. So just imagine uh, if you that's are a down payment like a, for another house. Yep, a high spender yeah. and don't know how to manage or invest. You're gonna end up, you know, being broke. Even yeah. these uh, athletes. Yeah. Uh, these footballers yeah. and yeah. Uh, NBA stars who make like billions and millions of dollars mm -hmm. because they are not able to manage their finances well. So that will bring you down to you know being able to manage your finances. So you, you know? think it's about the the, money, the financial management and yes. expensive lifestyle. Yes, expensive lifestyle. Because... That some of you travel nurses live. No, I mean sometimes <laughs> you have to treat yourself good also. I get but, it. I get uh, it. You have to take caution in that. Like you have to know how to do it. Okay. Great. Because uh, investment comes first. Mm -hmm. Because as uh, no nurse will tell you they will be able to do it for like the rest of their lives. Yeah. Every nurse you ask will tell you they want to retire at a certain age or whatever it is. So or they want to quit at some point and stuff like that or do some something. I know a lot of travelers who have quit, you know, nursing and now they are doing different things. Yeah. They are into real estate. They are yeah. into you know different things they are managing their own businesses and stuff they, they have like a care home you know yeah. facility yeah. that they are managing right now so okay. uh, it depends on you great 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 so speaking about some of the difficulties that you experience as a nurse one of the things that is very common in the news is, is about gun violence which in some instances may be blown out of proportion as some people have said but you have traveled across the length and breadth of the country have you ever come come across such an instance or what's your what's your experience as far as the gun violence in the u.s is concerned gun violence in the u.s started you know since you know okay it's, ne it's not it's never gonna stop okay and it, all because people everyone can buy a gun Okay. There's no gun laws. Okay. No strict, you know, gun laws in this country. Okay. So technically, if someone because they they have this thing that uh you know if you go to a shop or whatever to buy a gun and they run your records or whatever and you have a clean background or whatever. Sometimes though you don't even need to. You can go to Walmart and buy a gun as okay. long as you have a, a valid driver's license and uh you know mm. a good address and stuff. You can buy a shotgun. Okay. which you don't need it to be licensed but if you're going to be carrying that gun that's when you need like a concealed you know okay. or a, a, a license you know for okay. that and even without license it's easy to get because someone without a criminal record once they run your criminal records and you take the class uh you, you you qualify for that license and you'll be able to carry the gun around and imagine you are someone who is quick tempered and can control your emotions and your feelings having a gun yeah. on you what's gonna happen yeah you know what i mean so gun violence is something that i think this one is above our pay grade is something that is supposed to come <laughs> from the government they yeah. have to be able to manage it because we we cannot but have you experienced it as a have you no i haven't all? experienced that as a travel okay i've been to places i've been to a city especially in california one city in uh, fresno where there's a lot of gun you know violence you know over there like okay. a lot of shooting and stuff like that every day you see in the news and you know there's you know there's gun shooting this place gun shooting you know that place the police here and there and stuff like that but it's all about you you know okay. watching where you go i mean you don't have to 
uh, be seen everywhere, especially when people travel, they are always seen in the night, it's just a single day off they get, you know, they're always seen in the night club and stuff like that. So it's up to you. Okay. But also working as a nurse, I've had a patient who has been shot okay. and, you know, run into the hospital. Yeah, that, I mean, a, that's, that's common. I've seen yeah. That in other and uh, as well. there was one incident where we had a patient uh, walked straight into the ED and shot himself right okay. in front of there, you know. Okay right in the heart like right in the ed okay but he he didn't die though he, he got lucky <laughs> <laughs> i don't know <laughs> yeah so i think this thing is uh, i would say it's above our pay grade and it's something that the government needs to you know uh manage it you know well because if they're able to manage it from the top that i think it's gonna have a very great you know good effect you know okay on us too thank you so thank you for honoring the invitation and pouring your wealth of experience and speaking about the issues that are ongoing here uh to us as a nurse here in the u.s thank you viewers for watching i hope you enjoyed this this video um, we'll come your way next time with another interview. Just keep looking up for it on the channel. I had a lot to say. It's like being put on the spot sometimes. Yeah. Time, so. yeah. Yeah, but it's a lot that I have to say, share, but yeah. I time. think I think we are going to make time for that. <laughs> we are going to make time for that. And definitely, viewers, you are going to see this same nurse again in separate interviews on the channel. So mm -hmm. keep an eye on that. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I want to thank you for being a support to the channel. And, and we promise to bring you great content every single time. So thank you for watching viewers. And thank you Elvis for coming to the interview. It's a privilege interviewing you. And I'll see you in the next interview.